The onslaught of SUVs means that the traditional wagon is yesterday's news, right? Not so according to VW. It's reintroduced the Passat wagon, the Golf R Estate is on its way, and then there's this, the new Arteon shooting brake. But is it good enough to pry people out of their beloved SUVs? Let's have a closer look, but before then, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below as to whether you're team SUV or team wagon. The Arteon returns to Australian showrooms after a couple of years' absence, but this is the first time a wagon version has been offered. The range kicks off with the 140 TSI at 61,740, but we reckon you'll be more interested in the 68,740 206 TSI we're testing here. In both cases, the wagon body style adds $2,000 for a total of $70,740, which still makes the Arteon quicker, cheaper and roomier than the likes of the BMW 330i Touring and Audi A4 Avant. Let's face it, there's only one reason why you're going to buy the Arteon and that's the way it looks. After all, VW already offers the Passat 206 TSI wagon which has basically the same mechanicals, even more space and is four grand cheaper. So it's all down to whether you think the Arteon styling is worth the extra spend. To me, absolutely. I think this is a fantastic looking thing. The rear is maybe a little bit heavy set, but I love the design of the 20 inch wheels and the little details like the hockey stick daytime running lights. Under the bonnet is the same two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that VW sticks in pretty much everything. Here it develops 206 kilowatts and 400 newton meters, which in conjunction with a seven speed dual clutch transmission and all wheel drive, makes for a 5.6 second sprint from zero to 100 k's an hour. Overseas you can get an Arteon R with 235 kilowatts and 420 newton meters, which slashes this to just 4.9 seconds. But sadly, it's not on the cards for Australia. Claim fuel consumption is 7.7 .7 liters per 100 k, though 98 RON fuel is required as a minimum. Inside, the Arteon kind of sits halfway between Volkswagens of old and its latest offerings like the Mark 8 Golf, and it's a bit of a sweet spot. There's still plenty of technology in here, but there's enough physical buttons to make navigating all the various functions relatively straightforward. Haptic controls are now used for the climate control, allowing you to tap or swipe to adjust, and the steering wheel also uses this technology. It's clever, although I'm not sure it's any easier to use than a traditional dial or button. The driving position is widely adjustable and the seats offer plenty of support with 14-way adjustment, heating and massage, though ventilation is limited to the base model Arteon. One bugbear though, there's this little screen that pops up to activate the head-up display and not only is it an inelegant solution, it cramps the display and creates reflections in the windscreen on sunny days. There's also not many storage cubbies in here, just this little slot that closes in an extremely vicious manner. The infotainment can be operated by tapping through various menus as well as voice or gesture control, that to be honest, most people are probably gonna use smartphone mirroring. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay can be used wirelessly, but sadly there's no wireless charging, just a pair of USB-C ports in the center console. Otherwise, there's inbuilt satellite navigation and digital and FM radio, but AM is only available in the sedan, not the shooting brake. Odd. This all plays through an 11 speaker Harman Kardon stereo. The 10.25 inch digital instrument display has a number of different screens showing all manner of information and changes color along with the interior lighting depending on the drive mode selected. White for eco, yellow for comfort, blue for normal and red for sport. There's all the safety tech you'd expect as well as active cruise, rear and surround view cameras, front and rear parking sensors and park assist for both parallel and parking bay maneuvers. Backseat occupants definitely aren't shortchanged with heaps of room in every direction, including headroom thanks to this wagon roofline, which also makes it easier to get in and out. Though it must be said, these door bottle holders are a bit on the small side. Triple zone climate means an extra set of temperature controls and the outboard seats are heated. Other handy features include a ski port, USB-C and 12 volt outlets, and these little pockets on the front seat backs to store phones or the like. There are also a pair of ISOFIX mounts and three top tethers for the kiddie seats. The other reason for choosing the Arteon shooting brake is of course this, the load space. 
The tailgate is electrically operated and there's 565 litres of space or 1,632 litres with the 60-40 split rear seat folded. And that's despite having a full-size 20-inch alloy spare wheel. It's not a hugely tall space, but it is very long, though that also makes it quite difficult to reach those tether points. Nevertheless, there's a pair of LED lights, four tie-down points, a couple of fold-out hooks, and this neat luggage cover that automatically catches at a couple of points. Clever. So far, so good. The Arteon is ticking plenty of boxes. But what's it like on the road? Its looks and specifications suggest the Arteon is going to be quite sporty, but its luxury manners are what really impress. It's quiet and refined with an excellent ride, bar the occasional thump over a large impact. It's comfortable and undemanding, though in comfort mode the throttle is very doughy and unresponsive. Normal is probably the sweet spot for most driving as it doesn't stiffen the ride too much, but the Arteon is still perfectly habitable in sport, which also really wakes the engine up. Now it's a properly quick sports wagon. 0 to 100 k's in 5.6 seconds isn't rocket ship fast, but the Arteon still manages to relentlessly accrue speed, the gearbox automatically upshifting at redline even in manual mode. Doesn't sound amazing, sounds okay, in fact it sounds a bit like a diesel at low RPM, but the engine still has a nice broad spread of power. Up to a certain limit, quite a high limit it must be said, the Arteon is quick, composed and very enjoyable to drive. A touch slow in its steering but still accurate with plenty of grip, strong brakes and great traction. If you're someone who really likes to drive hard, I'd suggest that the forthcoming Golf R Estate is probably more your style. But this Arteon shooting brake is still capable of flowing along a good road with plenty of pace, whilst also being a great place to spend a long road trip. In our experience, you can expect around 9 to 10 litres per 100 k's in day-to-day -day use, while in terms of other running costs, VW does offer a cap price servicing plan, or you can pay for 3 or 5 years servicing up front for $1,500 or $2,500 respectively. So, is the Arteon shooting brake good enough to pry people out of their SUVs? Absolutely. This is a really polished thing. Comfortable, quick, spacious, modern and stylish. And while $70,000 isn't exactly cheap, you do get a lot of car for your money. But realistically, VW isn't gonna sell a lot of these things. But those that do make the choice are likely to be pretty happy that they did so. Thanks for watching Car Sales YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment down below.